Short-term memory is information we are currently aware of or thinking about. There are limits to the amount of information and how long we can store the information in short-term memory. So let's talk about capacity and duration of this short-term memory store. Digit span is the number of items that can be remembered or can be stored in short-term memory. So let's see how many uh, items you can hold in your short-term memory. On the next screen, you're going to be shown um, a bunch of letters and your task is to remember as many of those letters as possible. The letters will be presented for about five seconds. Then the screen will go blank, the letters will go away, and I want you to write down as many as you can remember. We'll then go on to the next trial and we'll do this six times. So pause your recording just for the moment and get yourself a pen and a paper and get yourself ready to do a very quick memory test. Okay, here we go. Okay, write down as many as you can remember. Next trial. Write down as many as you can remember. Next trial. Write them down. Next trial. And write them down. Next trial. Write them down. Next trial. And write them down. Okay, that's the end of the memory test. How did you do? Let's just have a look at all of the uh, letters, the answers. So in the first trial, of course, there were just two letters. Hopefully, most of you were able to remember those. In the second trial, we had four letters. The third trial, there were six. The fourth trial, there were eight letters. That's probably where it's starting to get a bit challenging. The fifth trial, there were 10 letters. And on the sixth trial, there were 12. So the vast majority of people, the average person, would get anywhere between six to eight letters. So if you manage to kind of get somewhere in that ballpark, you're about average. And this is what research showed us that the average capacity of short-term memory is somewhere between five to eight or five to nine items. So you would expect the majority of people to fall within this middle category. If you were able to remember more letters, perhaps in trial five or even all 12 letters in trial six, perhaps it's because you were able to uh, utilize some of the control processes that we talked about in earlier lessons, for example, rehearsal, or perhaps you were able to chunk the letters into more meaningful categories. For example, some people look at this last set of 12 letters as Z, Q, E, C, T, bum, on, R, V. So they make little chunks of these letters. So instead of it being one, two, three, four, five, six, seven individual things to remember, it narrows it down to three. Bum being one, on being a second, and third chunk being RV. 
So Miller was the first to coin what he called the magic number seven. So that's the average capacity anywhere between plus and two minus uh, items. So between five to nine is the average capacity of short term memory. But we can actually remember more information in our short term memory if we're able to combine larger um, meaningful into uh, smaller units called chunking. So a chunk is a collection of elements strongly associated with one another, but weakly associated with elements and other chunks. So in sentence form, we can actually uh, keep about up to 20 words or more in our memory span. For example, look at these two sentences here and here. In the first, the top row, we have a bunch of seven letters, uh, five here and so on. It would be quite difficult to remember all of these individual letters. But once we rearrange those letters into words, nickels, seven, any, and so on, we're able to remember these words much more readily than this top line because we're chunking them into meaningful segments, into words. And similarly, it's the same thing with this example, these two sections. Um, we have words, but they're rearranged in a way that don't really make sense. Nickels, seven, any, in, stitch, don't. When we put it into a more meaningful sentence, we are able to remember uh, much more of that information. A stitch in time saves nine. That becomes a chunk. We understand that and we can remember that much more easily. Chase and Simon did a very famous experiment and they wanted to see how chess players use chunking to aid their memory. So they asked chess players to memorize chess pieces positioned in a real chess game for about five seconds. And they compared to chess masters, those who had over 10,000 uh, hours of study playing chess, to those that were uh, uh, novel or beginners, so less than 100 hours of experience. So what they found out was that the chess masters were better at memorizing the positions. On the first try, the chess masters were able to play 16 out of 24 of the chess pieces correctly, and only after four trials, they were able to go up to 100% accuracy. The beginners, on the other hand, only were able to place four of the 24 chess pieces correctly on the first try, and it took them at least seven, if not more, trials to get to that 100% accuracy. So, you might think that maybe chess masters just have better memory. What is more likely, though, is that they were able to utilise chunking to help them memorise the pieces. So, because of their familiarity with the game, they were able to chunk sets of like four to six pieces into like a memorable gameplay chunk. And so they were able to remember more information, more of the pieces. So basically, when the chess masters were given random pieces to remember, their advantage went away. So when we had here a look at actual game positions, you see the master had 16 out of 24 on the first try versus the beginner. But when the chess pieces were just randomly placed on the board, the master did pretty much exactly the same as the beginning chess players. So it's not that chess masters have better sh short-term memory, it's just they have the ability to chunk the chess pieces into smaller four to six kind of patterns of play, meaningful patterns so they're able to remember more information. <laughs>